everyone. Happy, happy Wednesday. Welcome, everybody. I'm just getting myself set up here. We're just going to see who's joining me. I missed seeing you all last week, uh, and I'm so happy to be back with you live. Hello, everyone. We've got lots and lots of gals on uh, with the YouTube channel. We're just waiting to make sure that our Facebook friends get on. And yes, I'm starting to see the Facebook comments come in. So welcome. Uh, <laughs> I've got lots of comments. Got a few questions I'm, I'm seeing already that I'll try to get to. Uh, Estella is saying, welcome back to uh, all the Vallarta suntan scrapbookers. Hello. Thank you so much. Yes, I missed being with you last week, but there was good reason. I was enjoying time in Puerto Vallarta with all 104 of our Creative Memories Advisors who had earned the escape to Puerto Vallarta. So they were fantastic ladies to enjoy the week with. I reconnected with many friends and met many of them for the first time as well. We enjoyed beautiful sand and sun and food, lots of seafood. Uh, we had beautiful entertainment beautiful weather. We were treated like queens. They all had a great time and home office staff, we were so thrilled to be there with them uh, and treating them all to this well-deserved escape. So there's still time for you to uh, earn next year's escape. So if you are a CM advisor, you want to kind of refocus and check your trackers, check all of the requirements uh, see where you're at with your points earning because you do not want to miss it. And if you are not a Creative Memories Advisor, but you know what? You can join us still. Uh, you can join Creative Memories today, get started with your own business, and you can earn all the points you need to join us next year. And next year is in Riviera Maya, other side of Mexico, Cancun area. So it'll be different, but I'm sure it will be absolutely amazing just like this trip was so i appreciate that uh, i was able to go and i am um, appreciate that you guys all sort of tolerated a uh, pre-recorded fast and fun so hello everyone yes i'm so happy to be back hello hello we've got folks from all over i see my aussies i see um Gail from New Zealand. I've got Canadians. We've got Americans on here. We're so, so lucky to have uh, people from all over joining us. Um, I did see a question, so let's kick off with that. It was one of the first comments that was on here, and that was about sizzling summer. So I'm going to talk a, a, a little bit about some you know things that are coming up but yes there will be some sort we haven't finalized all of the details but there will be some sort of summer scrapbook challenge uh we don't know if it'll be called sizzling summer but we're going to definitely do something to keep you engaged and scrapbooking all through the months of july and august so stay tuned for details on that for sure hello everyone Yes, thank you, Barbara. I did have a great trip, and I am so happy that I was able to go, but I'm glad to be back. You know what? <laughs> I have to say, my hair did not enjoy Mexico. In every photo you're, you might see of me, it's a frizzy mess. It was awful, and I couldn't do anything with it, with the humidity. But my skin was lovely. <laughs> you know, my eczema around my eyes and my mouth and on my hands, it was so, you know... My skin was soft and, and, and it was wonderful. So I guess, you know, you have to decide which do you want, you know, good hair, good skin, because, uh, you know, I, I, I apparently can't have both. So there you go. Glad I'm back as well. Uh, Elizabeth saying she, get to, she got to meet me in person. It was so great. Yes, yeah, it was so fun to just be there and meet uh, gals who I've seen their names. I've seen their profile pictures but I have never met them. So it was a real, real um, honor to meet so many of our incredible advisors. Okay, so next year, make sure you join us. That's what I want to say about that. And I'll show you pictures. I don't have anything organized yet. We just got home the other night. I still thought it was, you know, Monday yesterday. So I'm a little bit out of sync, but I will share some of those when we get to talking about my 
current yearly album. I'll be sure to show you some. But today we're going to be talking about some of the new products that just came out because as we move into, you know, the end of April, beginning of May, it's graduation time. And we are so excited that the new You Graduated collection was released this uh, just yesterday, actually, uh, along with some other fun things. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, my graduate this year, give you a little bit of backstory on him and tell you what I'm planning on doing um, for his album. So a little bit of an update there. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about you graduated. We're going to do some borders because I think borders are a great thing to make ahead that you can add to a scrapbook page and, you know, work around your photos. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into that, I want to just recap the virtual crop that happened this past week, uh, this past weekend. And even though I was in Mexico, I was so excited when I had a chance to scroll through the Facebook group and see your amazing, absolutely amazing um, layout. I loved the squares and circles that we had going uh, in many of the sketches this month, and you guys really rocked it. I love seeing how, you know, even in my mind, when we look at a sketch, uh, you know, I have an idea, but some of the things that you guys did with those sketches never even crossed my mind. So again, it just goes to show, think outside the box, or in this case, the circle, and always ask, what if, what can I do? What will this, you know, what will happen if I do this? Just that fantastic, creative imagination, and then sharing it with everybody so that they can stretch their imaginations too. So thank you for participating. Our next virtual crop will be on May 10th, and that's when we'll be opening the secret box number two. I know there's been lots and lots of comments and questions about secret box number two. It went on sale yesterday, and the advisors who were with us in Puerto Vallarta got a sneak peek at it and they loved it and they think it's going to sell out <laughs> they were allowed to um you know have a look at it take a couple of pictures and although they're not allowed to post on social media publicly they are allowed to share with their teams and customers who might ask so they're pretty sure that secret box number two is going to sell out that's how confident they are I love it and I'm excited to work with it. I'm going to be bringing you a live secret box opening and that's going to be on Friday, May 10th, 4.45 p.m. Central Time. So that's just about 15 minutes before we typically kick off the virtual crops. So join me a few minutes early. Let's open the secret box together and then you'll see all of the sketches and those of you who have the secret box will be able to scan your QR code, go to the project booklet download, go to the video tutorial, all of that good stuff. So you'll be able to scrap through the weekend. Okay, so that's one of the things that's coming up. Uh, the other thing I just want to talk about really quickly before we dive into you graduated is NSD because that's coming up in just a few weeks as well. Now, if you don't know, NSD, or National Scrapbook Day, was started by Creative Memories way back in the 90s. I think this is, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, and it's grown, you know, to be celebrated throughout the scrapbooking industry. And I think I'm actually going to share, I'm gonna, I've got a couple of things I'm going to dig up that, share, that will share with you on that day. But, you know, we've got the proclamation, uh, all of the good stuff and all of the kind of the history about NSD. But we have never done a virtual event on National Scrapbook Day, which is the first Saturday of May. So Saturday, May 4th. So we are going to do something special. So many of our advisors, of course, have been having fantastic NSD events, but we're going to do something special. And if you've already attended an event with your advisor, or if you're an advisor who's already hosted an event, uh, we're still going to do some different things. So you'll want to make sure that you have the NSD customer bundle ready to go. If you want to participate, we're going to create some fun, different layouts. We have a little bit of a twist to share with you on that. 
Uh, and we're going to have a whole bunch of different things that are going to happen throughout the day. We've got prizes. We've got some surprises, lots and lots of fun, uh, you know, kind of questions and engagement uh, for you to take part in. Um, we've got people who are going to pop in. You might see some familiar faces from home office throughout the day. It's just going to be a really fun way to celebrate our incredible scrapbooking hobby, our memory keeping hobby. And we are excited to do that. So that's going to be kickoff at 9 a.m. Central Time, Saturday, May 4th. So I believe that's going to be midnight, uh, you know, in Australia. So uh, my, our Aussie friends, our friends down under, will have all of Sunday to do all of the fun things that are going to be happening because it's all going to be recorded. So if you're an advisor and you've already planned your NSD event for Saturday, May 4th, don't worry. You're going to be able to see all of the recordings afterwards. Uh, maybe you can even incorporate some of the things we're doing with your crop that day. It's just going to be a lot of fun and everyone is welcome. So that's going to be in the virtual crop Facebook group, just like our virtual crops are. So again, YouTube friends, come on over, make sure you're part of that virtual crop group and celebrate NSD with us. Okay. So yeah, great things coming up. NSD May 4th, Secret Box May 10th. And yes, we will be doing some kind of summer program to keep you all engaged. Okay. All right. I've talked enough. Let's get to it. Let's talk about you graduated because this is a super fun collection. And every spring we do some kind of collection for graduation. And this year it, it really ties back to a lot of fun things that we already have. Um, and we've also kind of extended it with a couple of other products. So let's just talk about the products really quick. Oh, I just realized I don't have the, the album cover handy. Okay, well, let's talk about these products here. So we've got the You Graduated paper pack, and this is a six pack because, again, we've heard in the past that, you know, people don't need necessarily a 12 pack to do a few pages of graduation ceremonies and things like that. And they want something new every year. So this is a six pack. You see, you see some great... Um, colors and icons here. It's going to go with some shimmer papers, white shimmer, gold shimmer, platinum shimmer, plus black and cool gray. So of course you can use black shimmer as well. Uh, you can use um, the cool gray. You can use white cardstock as well. And you see that we've got, you know, great stars. We've got a grid. We've got these fun little graduation caps, and then we've got some wonderful tonals. We've got this kind of yellow or gold diamond. This one I love because it's very similar to the uh, Back to School album. It's kind of like a modeled black and white notebook cover. And then we've got this nice wide stripe that looks great when it is uh, cut into strips. So that is the You Graduated paper pack. We've also got a single sticker sheet with the theme of graduation. Lots of stars. I've used a few that you're going to see here in a few minutes. Star borders, balloons, cap and gown, you know, some great title options. And then we have a wonderful embellishment pack. And I've got a few out here. And they have silver and gold foil on them. And we've left quite a few spots for you to actually do some journaling. And I think that's going to look really great, even journaling, you know, with black pen on that silver foiled um, embellishment. There's a little bit with the gold foil. So these are really wonderful. Uh, I haven't taken out the, the large one. There's some great large sizes here too. We've got some banners, banners that you can write on, great titles, time to party. I love these uh, gowns with the foil detailing. There's another one that you can write the, the class on, silver gown, the cupcakes with the little graduation caps. Again, more that you can write on tags and journaling. And then we've got these great sort of silhouettes, which I really love as well. There's a large cap, some books, more silhouettes. And then in the very large embellishments, this is, I think, where this embellishment pack is super fun. We've got some great frames, 
journal cards. Imagine that that's going to be a great one to include on a page. Top three moments. You know, maybe it's top three moments of high school or top three moments of the graduation ceremony or parties. Another little journal box. We've got some great large balloon embellishments. And that's really all you need on a page. You know, a title and these and your page is done. And then this one, which is absolutely fantastic. This would be a great place to put, you know, a wallet size photo of the graduate. Or you could write, use it as a journal box and write their story. So, so many options for, uh, you know, great embellishments. We're going to use a couple of these in our borders. And then we also have the silver and gold shimmer pens, which I'm going to be talking about in just a minute. Now, all of these silver and gold um, products also go with some existing silver and gold. So I don't know if you remember or have even seen the silver and gold collection. This one came out, I believe it was December 2022. Uh, and we've got a tonal paper pack plus we have a foiled paper pack so this actually has some beautiful foils in them and again you can see how that's going to be just absolutely lovely with the gold shimmer and the platinum shimmer plus we've got of course gold shimmer um or gold abc one two threes and um what else do we have and silver abc one two threes so those are going to work great and we're going to talk about the pens, as I mentioned, but don't forget, we also have the silver and gold dot tip pens and dual tip pens. So there's lots and lots and lots, uh, you know, available to expand this graduation themed collection of products and really create an entire album. Not to mention that we've also expanded the This Life collection with a great pack of black and white. We've had lots of requests for black and white paper that can be used with colored cardstock. Uh, you know, again, super versatile. So we've got little dots, stripes, uh, kind of plus signs or crisscrosses. We've got kind of these grid and linen-like patterns, some more stars and chevrons. And then, of course, kind of the opposite patterns uh, or colorways on the backs of those papers. So this Life Black and White, of course, will go with pretty much any collection. Uh, and we love it with the bold patterns of this Life. But you're going to find that it's going to work great with you graduated as well. Because as soon as you take any other color, whether it's red or orange or blue or green, and add it to the silver and gold of you graduated, or the black and white of this life black and white, you're going to have a really custom looking um, collection you know, of products to highlight your graduate. So let me tell you a little bit about my graduate. Um, some of you may know my son, Grayson, and he he's had some trials and tribulations over the last year uh, or the last several years. He actually missed a full semester of grade 10 due to um, a very intense health issue. And he and I basically lived in a hospital in Montreal for a semester. So he missed his first semester. And although he was scheduled to graduate last year, he could not finish two courses that he needed. He tried so hard and he was so bummed out that he could not uh, finish in time. But he has finished those classes. He is going to graduate this year. And we were just thrilled to get the graduation picture proofs. I couldn't be more proud of him for all of his perseverance and, um, you know, resilience that he's shown. Uh, just getting through that most difficult time in his life. And I'm going to be so thrilled to be able to order these pictures. They literally came uh, I think they were delivered Monday. So they were here when I got home from Mexico. So I am absolutely thrilled and so proud of him. And I don't know if you can see on here, but his school colors are blue. So I'm going to be adding some of our blue to this collection uh, for his graduation pages. And I think that's going to look absolutely gorgeous. So let me just pull this aside and let's get started with a couple of borders. 
because as I mentioned, I think borders are a great, we're going to come back to these. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten about them. Um, we're going to use, we're going to create some borders because I don't know what size of photos or how many photos I'm going to have yet. Plus, of course, I'm going to have the formal pictures, but I'm also going to have the photos of the graduation events. So there's a retreat, there's a graduation mass, there's the graduation ceremonies, and then, of course, we'll have some sort of celebration. So I don't know what all of my photos are going to be. So I think that making some borders is the best way to sort of get a little bit prepped ahead of the game and be ready to scrapbook very quickly once I have the picture. So we're going to make three borders today. We're going to make this really nice, simple, punched border. We're going to make a bit of a layered border. And we're going to make a, uh, a vertical border. And you can see here that I've used mostly the uh, you graduated paper pack over here with some black and white cardstock. And I've used the you graduated paper for my punched shapes, but I've used the black and white paper, some black cardstock, and some blue cardstock for this border. So let me walk you through how to make each of these borders. Each of them are a little bit different and again can totally be customized in terms of your um, your colors, uh, which punches you use, all of that, okay? I see a comment that shimmer pens are sold out. Let me talk about them right now be before everybody worries about that. They are not sold out because they have not arrived yet. They were delayed in shipping. So if you look on the website, you'll see that it says coming soon. We are expecting that the shimmer pens will be in-house later this week or the beginning of next. So I will talk about that and I'll remind you of that when we talk about them. But don't worry, they are not sold out. We have not even released them for sale yet. We ordered plenty because we know how much you love the shimmer pen that was in the Sparkle and Shine secret box number four, I think it was number four, last year. So don't worry about the shimmer pens. Okay, let's look at this border first. So we have a great little punch, the cap and diploma punch, and it punches out the two shapes. So you could use all caps, you could use all diplomas, you can use combination, etc. And it is a standalone punch. But this border is not a bunch of the punched out shapes lined up. This is actually a negative border and it could not be easier. So let's go ahead and create this. And what we need for this is a 12 inch by two and a quarter inch strip of paper. So I'm going to recreate it with the same. And that's totally selfish on my part. It's so that I will have a pair to use on my layouts. So I'm going to use the uh, yellow kind of burst or diamond paper from the You Graduated paper pack. Again, you can customize these to any, any colors and papers you want. And I've got it at two and a quarter. All right. So we're just going to set the rest aside. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and we're actually just going to lay it down here on our, actually, I'm going to get a little bit of positionable tape so that it does not move. And I'm just going to lay it down so that I can see the numbers going across the bottom of my 13 by 13 inch cutting mat. Then we're going to need a ruler and a pencil. And we are going to make some marks to guide our punching so that we have equally spaced punched shapes on our border. So we are going to just draw a line at one inch, three inches, basically all of the odds. So one inch, three inch, five inch, seven inch, nine inch, and eleven inch. Okay? And we're going to punch, this is the back side, remember, we're going to punch using the manufacturing marks on the back of the 
cap and diploma. So you can see that there is kind of a line there and that line is the center of the punch. So it runs from basically the top peak of the, where's my, it runs from the top peak of the cap and it runs to the little peak in between the ribbons there. So I hope you can see that line that runs vertically down through the punch. So we're gonna use that line and we are going to line up the pencil line that we just drew with the line on the punch. And we're just gonna alternate back and forth. So you can see there, hopefully you can see it, that I have the center of the ribbon and the peak of the cap lined up. Sorry, I'm just gonna go ahead and punch. I need to look at it myself here. There we go, okay? We're gonna save these for another border, okay? So there's one. Now we're going to turn it around and we're gonna do it the opposite direction. Same thing, lining up the lines, okay? And punching, and we're just going back and forth. So we don't have to, you know, arrange and, and glue any punched shapes. We're doing a negative cut border or a negative punched border. And back and forth and back and forth. And that two and a quarter inch uh, measurement, that's what helps us get the punch shapes right in the middle of the punch because the punch itself is one and three quarters. So by cutting out a two and a quarter inch by 12 inch and then dividing it equally, that's how we get the evenly spaced uh, punches. So isn't that fun? Now, of course, you could do them all right side up. I just thought it was kind of fun going um, alternating because the paper that has the cap on it, that's the back side here. The caps actually alternate. So you've got, you know, right side up, right side up. They kind of go in a diagonal line and then it's flipped over. So I just thought that that was kind of a fun nod to that. All right. So now you can see that we could put any color behind these and you could do each individual cap and diploma a different color. I'm just going to back it with black. So we need a two and a quarter inch piece of black. Okay, that's gonna go underneath like that. And we've got all of that. It's like, it's like automatically, you know, creates the contrast by putting that piece underneath. And then we need a base. So for our base, we're going to add a quarter inch to each side so that we've got a nice uh, little bit showing. So that means I need to do this uh, base and I'm gonna use the star paper from you graduated, two and three quarters. So you can see how easy that border is. And all I have to do is, uh, you know, adhere it all together. And I think that, you know, something like this is going to be great across, you know, maybe the bottom of a layout and I can have lots of room for photos. So I really like how that would continue right across a layout. If you wanted, you could certainly add a title to it. Um, I think there was one about the tassel. Yeah, the tassel was worth the hassle. Man, oh man, Grayson had a hassle, but it was worth it. So I would just add a title like that over top of one of these, um, punched out shapes, whichever one, you know, looks best once I get it on a page. Uh, I would say not on the edges because it's going to go over the edge of a page. Uh, but, you know, either of these kind of second punched shapes in or even down here, which still is just slightly off center. So super easy border. And I think that one is going to be great going across a two page spread. Okay. So that's border number one. I will put all of the measurements for these borders in the descriptions once I log off, once I finish up. Okay. So that's border number one. Okay. Simple. Now border number two, still really simple. We just have a little bit different layering. So again, we have a base 
This one is actually going to be three inches and I might have to get another piece of paper. I don't know. And then this piece here, the same gold as we, we used in the first border, that one is going to be two and a half. So let's just start with that one. So I need a two and a half inch of the gold. And I need a three inch of the stars. So I think I just have enough. Yeah. So let's get that cut while we're right here. Okay. So that's going to be basically my, my second border, my layers. Got a little bit of scrap there. And now I need some diamond shapes. And of course I have always said that, you know, the circle and the square punches are must haves. And if you did uh, the square uh, layout, the, the one that had all of the squares around the outside edge, I mentioned in my tip that this was a must have for that because even when I measure and cut very carefully, a punched shape is always going to be completely the same. So even when I cut and measure very carefully with our 12 inch trimmer, my squares tend to be, you know, not exact. So punching out 20 squares for that layout that we have featured during the virtual crop made it super easy. These are definitely uh, punches that you can bring out again and again and again and adapt to any type of um, theme. Okay, so we need one, two, three, four, five. And the reason we need five punches is we want to measure them from corner to corner. And they basically measure two and a half inches corner to corner, even though this square itself is one and three quarter inches. So that's why only five actually fit across. And you do have to either layer them just a bit or trim off the edge of the outside ones. So I've got my five squares and let's just talk about again using our uh, 12 inch mat to really just help us center everything. I'm just going to put it along this line here. And now I have the lines above and below this border. So I'm going to use those lines to help me center and arrange because if I come along here and just kind of, you know, think to myself, oh, that looks like it's in the center and that looks okay. And yeah, that looks good. You can start to see that I'm not, you know, necessarily getting them equal or in, you know, perfect alignment. So I love my 13 by 13 inch cutting mat because it helps me align things perfectly. So I'm going to make sure that my top point and the bottom point of my diamond is right along that center six inch line, right? So you can see that it's perfectly in the middle. I love that it helps us do things like that. And it's so easy. We don't have to, you know, be math stars or spatial whizzes. So now I'm going to put the next one right beside it. And again, I'm just going to make sure that the top point and the bottom point are right on the lines. So I can continue this very quickly. Okay, top point and bottom point on the lines as close as I can get them. And I love that pattern that it's making. We've got a real nice uh, sort of almost like an argyle pattern that's happening. Diamond pattern that's happening as we go across. So I'm more worried about getting them uh, equally spaced. I'm not so worried about the overhang. I'm just going to trim that off. Okay. So now you can do whatever you want with the little extras. Let's just get these, uh, let's just get this all put together. There's my regular tape runner. There we go. And I always like it as well for centering you know, the borders on top of each other. So I know that it's half a quarter inch in from the top and bottom edges. So there I go. And then I can just take my scissors. I knew I had them out. 
flip it over and cut off those little end pieces. Okay, so there I go. So now I can come along and take, um, let's punch some black caps and diplomas. So I can come along and I could fill each one with a cap and a diploma. I could just put the caps in the very center. I could kind of overlap them and make them sort of extend over the sides of the diamonds. Um, again, I can, you know, switch around the, the placement. You can see here I've got these two with the tassels on the right side, and then I flipped it over here. So, you know, you can do whatever you like. You, of course, can also add some of your embellishments. That one might be a little bit big if you want to still see, you know, the, um, the uh, diamond underneath. But, you know, maybe you're going to put congratulations there uh, or maybe I think a circle went, might be better with the circles, but you've got lots of different options. You can even sort of add a journal box that bridges between the two. And so I just added the three caps and diplomas here and then I took the stars. I mentioned I had used the stars. I took the star stickers and so proud and just popped those into two of the diamonds. But again, you know, some of these, like even the follow your dreams, that's a small enough circle that it would fit inside. We've got, you know, wherever you go, go with all of your heart, some great titles. That would be really nice inside one of the diamonds. So you've got lots and lots of different options. And of course, you, as I mentioned, you could add a journal box or you could just simply write in these spaces as well. Okay, so again, I will put the measurements for those, but that is border number two. And then let's do border number three, which is uh, featuring the circle punch and the black and white paper pack. And again, this could be a horizontal border, but I just thought I'm gonna make a couple of vertical borders so that I could maybe put them on, you know, the outside of a two page layout. And again, have lots of space for the photos in between instead of having, you know, borders, you know, something like this might be the top and bottom. And then because these are three inches wide, I would have room for three, four by sixes in between and that would be my page. So how quick, there's one more, how quick would that be to get, you know, a page done if I had two three inch borders? And again, of course, I could put them across the bottom, I could put them both across the top, or I could put one at the top, one at the bottom, okay? So that's why I think borders are a great thing to make ahead when you don't know exactly what sizes and the amounts of photos that you're going to have. I kind of think that, you know, for some of these, especially the graduation portraits, those might be large eight by tens. Uh, so that might take up, you know, almost all of the page. So again, having a nice vertical board and portrait very, very nicely. Okay, let's get on to this last one. So the measurements for this one are a little bit smaller. I know that this last one was quite large, but again, two, three inch, whoops, it looks like I might have frozen. There we go. I think I'm back. Um, but again, two, three inch borders will fill up six inches of space and then you have room for the, the six inches of photos. But this one is a little bit smaller. This measures two and a half inches. So we want two and a half inches of the black and white diagonal stripe. That's gonna be the base. And I love a diagonal stripe. I love how it moves the eye. I love how it gives a really dynamic feel. Uh, and you know, it just, it just creates such a great movement. So I might flip over, that's not gonna work. It's gonna be the same both cross. I thought if I flipped it, it would go the other way, but it didn't. So it's gonna be the same, that's okay. It's still gonna have a lot of nice movement. And then the stars paper is just two inches. So two and a half for the base, two inches for our layer. 
And then we need some circles. So my circle punch, I can get six circles. I can get six squares uh, if I'm using them straight up and down as well. It was just because we put the squares on the diagonal that we only were able to get five across when we did this border. Okay, so typically you should be able to get six if you were just lining them up. So there's three blue and three black. See, look how fast that is. Love it. And as you can see, uh, I'm going to use the same sort of technique. It's not really a technique. That makes it sound very important, but it's really just a, a time-saving method of placing all of my all of my circles and getting them nice and equally spaced. So six inches is you know our midpoint. So I'm going to put one just slightly above six inches. I'm going to try to center it as best I can side to side, and then I'm going to work out from that. So this one is going to go just below six inches. So the six inch mark comes right in between those two. Okay, so we're going to put these down real close. Since I've already got another border I'm kind of working from, I can, I can use that as a bit of a guideline. And then I've got a nice equally spaced border. And this is the great part is that you could um, make these in any color. So red, green, I think purple, orange, you know, whatever the school colors are, that would be um, so easy to customize. I'm just going to move this one down a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And then let's go ahead and just add this to our base. Same thing. There's two and a half inches wide. So I know that I need a quarter inch on either side. That looks good. Okay. And I can do the same thing. Now remember we punched out when we did this border we punched out from this yellow paper. So I've got all of these nicely contrasting um, caps and, and diplomas. So I could do the same across, right? Or I could do them opposite just for a little bit of difference. And I do, I did use one embellishment there. So I could use another circle embellishment and you know, maybe that one's going to go down here, right? And I can just space out my remaining diplomas and caps or whatever I decide. Let's just, let's just alternate these. So diploma cap. Oh, see, because I've got that. Okay. So let's stay with, let's stay with the, the way I was going. We'll start with caps at the top. Okay, because I want to see the blue, so I don't want to cover up the blue, but that might be my second border. And I did pop these up with some foam squares and my trick for foam squares behind any of these little skinny things is to always cut the large foam squares with my micro tip scissors while they're still on the backing paper. So I get a nice little skinny foam square foam strip and pop that on the back of the cap or sorry, the diploma. And then it looks great. Okay. So that is the third border, the vertical border. And, uh, I'm glad to use the, I'm happy to use the circles here because I think that's going to add some nice contrast to what will almost certainly be, um, you know, an eight by 10 rectangular photo. So I love that. Okay, so again, I will make sure to put all of the measurements for these borders in the description. But let's talk a little bit before we go about the shimmer pens, because I know, I know that you're excited about them, but I also know that we get a ton of questions about them. So I'm just cutting 
off a little bit of some white uh, paper here, white cardstock, so that I can show you a couple of things. And then maybe we'll play around with some other um, little circles. I've got a couple of little samples here to show you as well. So we'll play around with the shimmer pens here. Let me just grab a drink real quick. I feel like I talked, you know, for five days straight, but I haven't talked much since I got home, so my throat was really dry. Okay, shimmer pens. The biggest question is, people, you know, post on Facebook that they can't get the ink to come out of the shimmer pens. There's a little embossed sort of area right here on the side. I don't think it's going to show up, but there's an embossed thing right here that says press. So that's where you're supposed to press. The ink is in this side, and then you can see the nib and the kind of the barrel that would hold the excess in this side where the cap is. The problem is, is some people don't realize that there's a little black ring when you first get it, and it will be between the barrel and the cap. So you literally have to unscrew these two pieces, and I'm not talking about just taking the cap off, but you have to unscrew these two pieces, and the black ring that I just dropped will be right in between there. It'll kind of look like that. Okay, I don't have another one that I can take apart for you, but it will look like that. And there will be no ink in the brush tip, the nib. So you actually have to unscrew them. Okay, and this is going to get messy if I unscrew it, but you're going to take that black ring out and throw it away. And then when you screw the two pieces back together, there's a little pointy part inside here that punctures the reservoir where all of the ink is. And that allows the ink to flow down into this barrel and into the nib when you press. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. The first thing I always remind people is to the first, especially the very first time you press, you're going to watch the ink come down. All of a sudden, this black area here is going to get filled with the ink. And you might actually have, and I'll see if I can get it to happen again. When you press, you want to have it over a piece of scrap paper because you might get some droplets of ink that actually flow right out of the top. You can still use that. So that's why it's great to have a little piece of scrap paper because it'll catch the ink before it makes a big mess on your project. So don't hold it over top of your scrapbook page or your card or anything like that. Hold it over a piece of scrap paper. Okay. Now you can still use this. Just think of this as a little bit of paint and then you literally can just kind of draw with, you know, use that excess. The rest of the time, you should be able to just press gently and there will just be enough inside the brush tip itself. But if you're worried, I like to just have a scrap piece of paper. If I haven't used it for a while, I just do a little bit of a squeeze and if any of the ink comes out, I can catch it. Now, I've got a couple of examples. So this was a white... I punched this out of white cardstock and I filled it in with the gold pen. So you can really get a sense of how rich that shimmer brush ink is. Uh, this one is the diamond, the yellow diamond. And what I did there is I just sort of imagined that I was just coloring in like the mortarboard portion of the cap. And I also just outlined it a bit and put the, uh, some gold ink on the tassel. And then this one is how the gold looks on a black punch out. So it's fun once you get your pens to take some scraps, punch some shapes, and see how the different colors of ink looks on the different colors of cardstock or paper. Okay, so this one is the blue with silver. This one is white with silver. You can see how rich that is. And uh, let me see, let's, let's do a black one with the silver. Okay, so again, I like to often use the 
if especially if I'm coloring in something completely, I like to use that scrap paper kind of as my base. So again, I'm going to give it a little bit of a shake. One of the things that you'll want to uh, remember is that these should be stored horizontally. If you store them with the cap side down, the ink will run down. You probably have a little pool of ink inside your cap when you open it. And if you store it upside or right side up with the cap up, the nib up, then you might have a lot of squeezing to do and it might bubble out again. Okay, so I'm just going to take that off. I do have some ink right in the nib right now. So let's just go ahead and see what the black, sorry, what the silver looks like on the black. So I'm just literally stroking it as if I'm coloring it in. You can take advantage of the, uh, the brush but just short, nice little strokes will work. If you're coloring in an entire area, use just use the tip of your multi-purpose tool, or if you have, where are my little tweezers, right? You could just use your, the tip of your tweezer to kind of hold that down. And then I do like to color over the edge. This is one time when coloring outside of the lines or over the edge is good because then you'll catch the edge of the cardstock. So this is what the silver looks like on the black. I don't know if it's going to catch the light because it's still kind of wet. Okay, but you can just see that there's a little bit of a sheen and a shimmer there. So play around with those and you know, until you get the look that you want. Now, the other thing that they're really nice for is to color in an embellishment. So this one has congratulations and there's kind of a white scroll and then there's the gold, you know, kind of ribbon or rosette. So I might decide to take my silver shimmer pen and just, you know, put a couple of details, almost like coloring in a coloring book. So maybe I'm just going to add some silver to this sort of folded over area, almost like a little shadow, right? I could go under or over, but just that, and maybe we'll do inside here too. Just that little bit of extra shimmer. It's a nice fine tip, so you, you can do nice finely detailed work. But when that dries, that's gonna give it just a really nice little shimmer on your page. It's not going to be like a gold or silver foil. Okay, it's going to look like you colored it in with a shiny metallic ink. Okay, now just as by contrast, let's just remind you that if you want to do things like, you know, adding little dots and details, then you might want to consider the gold and silver dot tip uh, pens. Because, you know, you can go around the edge of something with either big dots or fine little dots. You could draw, you know, draw lines and shapes and do some journaling as well. And again, if you're looking for more, you know, kind of doodling, then the silver and gold dual tip or dot tip pens might be something that you want to consider. But I love the shimmer pens. I love just having that for that coat it's just like a light little dusting of shimmer. But you can see when you color on the white, it really creates a continuous, solid, uh, metallic look. So that's a lot of fun. So again, if you didn't catch what I said about the shimmer pens earlier, if you were looking online and are worried that they are sold out, they are not sold out. They have not arrived to the warehouse yet. We're expecting them either the end of this week or beginning of next. So if they're not in there by Friday, hopefully they'll be in there by Monday or Tuesday. So just keep an eye on the, um, on the website. And right now it says coming soon out of stock. Once the little coming soon banner is uh, removed, it'll show the price. It'll basically be open for purchase and you can buy them to your heart's content. I'm going to tell you just a little secret. We know that you love these. We've heard so many requests for these. You might think, and you might be right to think, that we might have other colors coming later this year. So you might want to start grabbing these so that you can collect all of the different colors 
that we will be bringing you throughout the rest of this year and into next year. So don't miss out on the silver and gold first two shimmer brushes that will be available outside of a secret box. Okay. All right. So that's all about the shimmer pens. So much fun. And then of course we created all three of those you graduated borders. I'll just put them back up here for you just so you can be kind of reminded. And I will definitely put all of the measurements for these three borders in the descriptions as soon as we finish up here in just a minute. All right. So you graduated again. I'm just so proud of my my guy there for persevering, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, disappointment and uh, uh, all of those feelings and emotions that go along with it. And we couldn't be more proud that he's uh, he's gone through and finished off those last two courses that he needed. That's all he needed. Was, he was just two courses short and he literally just ran out of time. So we are thrilled for him and we're going to celebrate in to the end of May. I think it's June 6th, actually. He's got a retreat at the end of May, and then uh, graduation happens at the beginning of June. So super proud of him. So thanks for, for letting me share that with you, because I know many of you uh, that I talked to in Puerto Vallarta were asking about him. So Grayson was my son, my older son, who had the back surgery at the Montreal Shriners Hospital. So again, really intense uh, surgery, uh, and he is just a real trooper. So Thanks for all of you who asked about him. Okay, so next week, uh, I will be back live. Who knows what we're going to do? I, I don't think I can tell you. You just have to come back and see what we're working with next week. Um, but the following week, I will actually be gone again. So there will be a second episode of Frequently Asked questions that we got from your responses when we did the survey. So again, thank you for uh, you know your approval of that and your acceptance of you know having a pre-recorded fast and fun i'll be here live next week but then it'll be another pre-recorded the following week as i head off to minnesota because we are finishing planning all of 2025 for you and we've got a bunch of product development meetings and designer meetings and we're going to map it all out and there's going to be some amazing amazing things coming your way uh, for the rest of 2024 and into 2025. Okay, so it's going to be good. Um, I think that's everything. I'm just looking at my little checklist here, as I always like to do. Keep an eye on the website for your shimmer pens being uh, open for sale. Grab your secret box number two. I know that some of you like to see, you know, what's in it at the opening before you choose to buy it, because we do when we have supplies last, uh, when we still have supplies, we will keep it open throughout the weekend. But you save 10% if you buy it by noon on May 10th. And of course, it's while supplies last. And when 104 top advisors say this one's going to sell out, I, I think you can bank on that. So grab your secret box, uh, watch for the shimmer pens. Uh, put the, the those two dates on your calendar, May 10th, 4.45 p.m. for the secret box and May 4th, Saturday, May 4th for NSD. And make sure you have your customer bundle to participate in that. So we're going to have lots of fun. OK, lots of fun things coming up. I'm so excited about uh, spring and summer. Busy time, but super fun. OK. So thanks so much for joining me. I'm going to go through those comments and I will put the descriptions in or the measurements in the description and I will see you all next week. Thanks so much for joining me today. Okay. Bye-bye for